So chances are good that if you've been on the internet anytime during the last couple of weeks, you've seen this little guy, everybody's favorite 50 year old baby. So Baby Yoda has taken the world by storm and who can blame him? He's adorable. And that's exactly the reason why I decided to print one. <laughs> <laughs> so this cute little guy was 3D printed using a model made by Lewis Kent and he really did an amazing job. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to download and print one for yourself. So in today's video I want to turn this 3D printed plastic baby Yoda into a cast plaster baby Yoda that is hollow inside so that we can use it as a little piggy bank. Like a Yoda piggy bank. Baby Yoda piggy bank. Baby, baby Yoda bank. Anyways, this little guy still has a ton of support structure and stuff on it. So we'll start by cleaning this stuff up and then we'll get it ready for casting. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Let's get started. We've got them all cleaned up and all the support structure is removed. Now there's still some rough areas from the print itself, but this plastic is super hard to sand. So rather than spending a ton of time getting this plastic figure all smooth and perfect, we're gonna first cast it in plaster and then sand the plaster instead because that is much, much easier to sand. And that brings us to the next step. In order to cast this guy out of plaster, we need a mold to cast the plaster into. And we're gonna build a frame for that mold using a couple of sheets of this polystyrene. We're quite simply just gonna make a box that our little Yoda can fit quite snugly inside. That finishes up the container that we're gonna to use to cast our mold into. This little guy has a good amount of space all the way around and I've glued in a couple of extra pieces in the corners to save a little bit on the molding material. And let's talk about what we're gonna to use to cast this mold. For this project, we're gonna use something called alginate powder. It's a natural powder that has a lot of the same properties as silicone. The main difference being that this is a lot cheaper, but also way less durable. So when mixing this alginate powder with water, it will set into a similar consistency as silicone. But only a few hours after it's cast, it will start to break apart and lose its shape. Which makes this stuff most suitable for one-time castings, which is all we need for this project. But before we do any sort of casting into this, we first need to figure out how much material to mix up. And we're gonna do that by pouring some water into our container, which is also a great way to check for any leaks. Well, okay, 13 liters is how much it took to fill this thing up, and that's also how much material we're gonna mix up. So I poured out the water again, and I actually also ended up gluing in a couple more of the foam pieces to try and save a little bit on the alginate. So we're now down to 12 liters to fill up this entire mold, which brings us to the next part, and that is mixing up the alginate. So when it comes to mixing this stuff, mixing ratios are super important. So always make sure to check the mixing ratio that is specified for your product. It might vary slightly from product to product. In my case, it's four to one. Four parts water and one part alginate. So I'm now measuring up everything separately before I start mixing everything together. That is so that I don't need to waste any time measuring anything once I've started mixing. So I've measured up both the water and the alginate in the exact right amount. I'm gonna mix everything together in this big bucket and then we'll pour it into the mold. Jesus, I'm making a mess. So about half an hour and a lot of cleanup later, the alginate has set up. It's now quite firm and has quite a similar feel to it as silicone. So we're now gonna remove the foam pieces on the outside here, but we're gonna do that quite carefully because we're hopefully gonna reuse them when we cast plaster into there.
And this is our finished mold. It's super jiggly and the algina is pretty brittle, so I have to be super careful not to destroy it. I'm now gonna carefully try and cut this thing open so that I can remove the printed Yoda from the inside. Baby Huda is finally free again. It was quite challenging to get him out of there. There are unfortunately a couple of small bits and pieces that didn't survive the demolding. I've tried my best to stick everything back together using some toothpicks. And now we're gonna take the blue styrofoam pieces and tape them back together so that we can give the mold a little bit more rigidity. Everything went together and lined up nicely. And since this stuff will start to dry out and deteriorate fairly quickly, it's now time to cast plaster into there right away. Now we're gonna use the same type of plaster that we've used before in the video where we made the lamp. Check out the video right here. And again, it's super important to follow the mixing ratios. In this case, it's three to one, three parts being plaster and only one part being water. So vastly different ratios between the two materials. I'm just gonna mix up a little bit at the time, pour it into the mold and then try and move the mold around like this, coating the entire inside with an even layer so that we get the hollow Baby Yoda at the end. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be hard. It certainly doesn't help that this thing is like 15 kilos. <sighs> it's the day after I cleaned up all the mess I made yesterday. The plaster is set and I'm honestly quite worried about how this turned out. As you saw the technique of mixing up a little bit of plaster in a cup, pouring it in and then swiveling it around to cover all the surfaces inside worked really well for the first layer. But then after pouring the second and third layer, the first layer started to dry up and that's when the issue started occurring. So you see what started happening was that the first layer started to dry out and then it started to crack because when I moved this mold around, it wasn't sturdy enough so it started flexing a little bit. So you see the inside of the mold was kind of like this cup with hardened plasters on the edge. And when I started moving it around and like squeezing on it, basically the same thing as this happened. Yeah. So what I had to do instead was leave the mold flat on the table and then use a paintbrush to paint the plaster all the way around the inside. That worked out much better, but I'm still not sure if we managed to rescue it from the first layer starting to crack up. And I guess the only way to find out is to cut this thing open and have a look. All right. Wow, I mean, all in all, I'm quite happy with this. On the surface, you can definitely see the issue of the initial layer having cracked, but I think after some sanding and paint, that won't be noticeable at all. <laughs> it also looks like he has a little bit of a skin condition with all those bubbles on his face. Those come from there being bubbles in the alginate casting and then got filled with plaster, but that won't be any problem to get rid of. The only real issue here are his ears. We definitely need to fix those. I might try to remake just the ears, making another casting from this 3D printed model and then gluing them on. But other than that, I'm actually really happy with the amount of detail and the quality of the cast. It copied everything perfectly down to the layers from the 3D printing that you can see on the top here. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time cleaning him up and fixing his ears and then we'll hopefully get ready to paint.
look at this cute little guy. Our baby Yoda is basically finished. I cleaned up all the surfaces and everything is looking really good. I also managed to fix the ears by making new molds from the 3D printed model and then casting new ears in plaster and gluing those on. I've also sealed up the bottom and cut the hole in the top so now it's a piggy bank. A baby Yoda bank. The last step now is painting so let's do that. And with that, this little guy is finished. And he's now ready to protect your coins with the force. I had a ton of fun making this little guy. Although we had some minor issues along the way, I still think this project turned out really, really well. It's been forever since I tried to paint anything, and considering that, I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. It's been a fun little project, so thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please give the video a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Now to the problem of getting the cash out of here again.